This is a short introduction to the Human Ecosystems Project. The Human Ecosystems is a project which represents an international effort dedicated to enabling the emergence of a participatory ecosystem in which people, administrations, organizations and enterprises coexist and collaborate to promote a new definition of value which is itself ecosystemic and which depends on the well-being of the social, environmental, political and perceptive well-being of society and of all of its members. Human Ecosystems tries to achieve this objective by gaining better understandings of cities relational ecosystems, which means understanding the ways in which people in cities organize themselves in communities and cultures, and the roles which they have in them, how they communicate, exchange information and knowledge, how they express emotions and opinions, how they form bridges or boundaries, and how this continuous flow of information and communication and interactions provokes positive change. We collect all this data in cities using social networks, sensors and other sources of information and we transform this resulting information about the relational ecosystems of cities into a source of open data so that it is accessible and usable from a variety of stakeholders bringing a wide array of benefits to citizens, administrations, organizations and communities. The project started in Italy, in the city of Rome, and is quickly spreading to multiple cities across the planet. We now explore human ecosystems approach to the creation of a participatory ecosystem in cities. We base our practice on the concept of microhistory, which was born during the 60s when a series of history, anthropology and soci sociology researchers realized that most large-scale issues could not be fully understood by analyzing macro events and that the possibility to comprehend the networks and the myriads of micro events happenings in people's daily lives was needed to fully understand the causes, forces and interactions which happened at larger scales. Sociologist Michel Deserteau published a book titled The Practice of Everyday Life. Deserteau was convinced about the revolutionary potential represented by people's continuous creativity. In the book, he identified the distinction between strategies and tactics. Strategies are the administrative and bureaucratic dimensions of life, laws, regulations, forms to be filled, and administrative boundaries, for example. Tactics, instead, constitute the ways in which people continually navigate strategies, continuously reprogramming them to adapt and personalize them in their daily lives. Tactics, according to Deserteau, had a revolutionary potential as they represented the constructive, positive space in which people constructed their reality and fulfilled their desires and expectations, with a high degree of collaboration and self-organization. Strategies are top-down, tactics are bottom-up, and they both coexist in the world in a continuous struggle and interaction, defining a space, a public liminal space, in which a positive, constructive, creative conflict exists. 
This space has been named the third space by Edward Soja. Tactics have one large problem, their legibility. Tactics are often not legible. This means that they fail in becoming a source of knowledge which is shareable and usable by multiple people and in other contexts. Tactics, most of the times, live and die with the people who enact them, leaving no trace. If we could learn from tactics and build upon them in participatory, collaborative and inclusive ways, positive change would come about. We need to learn how to see the third space. A similar concept is used in architecture by Marco Casagrande in the notion of the third generation city and in the theory of urban acupuncture. In them, he defined the methodologies to understand the cities' flows of information, communication, knowledge and interaction across cultures and communities, to identify the pressure points, just as in acupuncture, which can then be leveraged to enact punctual interventions which provoke wider, inclusive and participatory change. In human ecosystems, we use both of these approaches. This is the city of Turin in Italy. It is uh, reconstructed in the image uh, through its social networking messages. Imagine starting from a black image and whenever a social network interaction happens in the city, to turn on the corresponding point in the image, making it brighter and more saturated as the messages build up. As you can see, the entire city can be reconstructed in this way. This other image highlights where people speak Italian in the city. This one highlights where people speak Arabic in the city. As you can see, they are two entirely different cities in the same physical space. This other image highlights the location in the city of Turin in which and for which people have expressed the desire for a transformation in the city. A park, a public swimming pool, more frequent buses, more safety, different forms of social spaces, and so on. This animation shows on the bottom a map of the city of Turin and on top of it a 3D surface which reacts to the intensity with which people express love on social networks in the city. It is love in Turin. We can do this for multiple emotions, understanding where, why, when, how often, in what context, from what cultures and communities people express fear, joy, happiness, trust, hope, frustration and other emotions. Of course, we can compare the relational ecosystems of cities across the planet. We can do this, for example, to find recurring patterns or to experiment in other places patterns which have successfully and positively happened in other places and contexts. We can dive down in cities and observe them, providing this information to citizens, schools, administration, artists, designers and organizations, to enable them to understand the relational ecosystem of their cities and to use them to organize themselves or even to create novel products and services which use this information.
For example, this is what five seconds of Rome relational ecosystem looks like. As you can see, a wide number of people and organizations express and many form networks of relations talking to each other. We can notice through color how different subjects have different roles in the relational ecosystem, allowing us to understand how information, knowledge and emotions flow in the system. This is another view in Rome, showing the intensity of a certain emotion across the city. This other image shows how people discuss various cultural subjects across the, theater, uh, across the city. Theater, music, cinema, arts and others. This image shows a large event as it takes place in real time, as it unfolds in a part of the city. These three interfaces show different kinds of compasses which have been created using the human ecosystems. The first two on the left highlight the possibility of danger in the proximity of the user. Imagine it, for example, in the case of an emergency scenario, such, a such as a natural catastrophe or a violent riot in which people could use social networks to express the availability of shelter, uh, help or to find each other. The third one on the right is an emotional compass. It doesn't point to the cardinal signs, but to the directions in which various emotions have been expressed in the city. You can recognize them through colors. It is a different way to navigate the city. This diagram shows the recurrence of the sensation of trust in a certain neighborhood. It is useful for everything from public administration to citizen self-organization to even real estate. This image shows the ways in which we use the human ecosystems in occasions of the revolts in Cairo, Egypt, to understand the dynamics of the revolt. This image shows a small part of the people who expressed themselves during the revolts in Cairo. And so, how do we make the human ecosystems happen in cities? We use social networks to capture public conversation, combine it with other sources of data and information, and we release them as a source of accessible open data, which can be freely used by everyone. Multiple processes are involved allowing us to understand the places, emotions, relations and themes which are discussed across the city and in its communities and cultures. All of these are combined uh, to provide not only a source of data, but also a set of services and opportunities which are truly accessible, usable and inclusive. In each city, we create a laboratory and what is called a real-time museum of the city. The real-time museum of the city is a real museum in which the relational ecosystem of the city is exhibited. It is an iconic, breathtaking, visionary experience which allows you to see the city's life unfold before your eyes. Communities and cultures in the city can be explored. You can even find yourself and see who you, you're connected with.
who is interested in the things you're interested in, whether you're connected with them, or find ways in which to form bridges and interactions. You can move back and forth through time to understand how the emotions, relations and issues in the cities transform and evolve. Closely connected to the real-time museum of the city is the laboratory. Here, teachers and mentors allow you to learn how to use the relational ecosystem of the city for your own purposes. Whether you are a citizen wishing to collaborate with other citizens, maybe to clean up a park, an administration desiring to create a participatory decision-making process, an artist wanting to create a generative artwork which reacts to the city's emotions, a designer wanting to create innovative products or services, a school desiring to teach each, its students how to bring about civic engagement, or about just anything else. The lab is the place to go. Periodic events are hosted in the real-time museum of the city to showcase what has been produced in the labs, to engage communities and cultures in the city, to establish interconnections and even more relations, and also to interconnect with other ecosystems in other cities across the planet. Everything that is created in the human ecosystem is shared across all its instances in cities worldwide, creating a new commons. We're calling it the ubiquitous commons. Thank you and see you in the human ecosystem.